everybody. This is Belinda from Belinda's Book Notes. I'm here to do a Friday Reads. I was going to put the air on, but it's so loud. I, I, when I, I did a little test sample and it was so loud in the background, I just thought it would be annoying. So I might start sweating during this process. We'll see. I moved a lot. Hi. Oh, it's been, it seemed like a while since we chit chatted. Um, I wanted to make sure I got on and talk to you about where I've been with the reading and just where I've been. I've been having some really chronic like headaches um that I just really have just like put a damper on things and just slid me down and I haven't been able to like um do everything that I wanted to do and I haven't obviously been doing videos and I have the thing is I have a video I have two videos that I want to put up one is a vlog my spring vlog and now we are officially in summer I had the I had in the back of my mind I'm like well it's okay because guess what it's not summer yet, so it's okay to put it up. Um, but now we are officially in summer, so I'm going to have to like really like um, hustle, get that edited, and I'll still put it up as a spring vlog. We'll vlog. We're just gonna get it up late, and then I want to do a summer one. I would love to do two, but listen, it took me this long just to get the spring one. So if I get one each season, that will be um, more than I did last year. So, um, so I have that, and then let's see what else can I tell you. Um, I did pretty good with my reading this month for me. Um, we'll talk about that and, and where I am with all these other things. And I have been shopping um, and also finding, I'll show you at the end, some books that I got from a little library. So there was no money involved, which is even worse. It's bad for people like me because then I'm like, well, I didn't even pay for it. So it has to go in my car and go home with me. Anyway, I hope you guys are doing well. Let me know down below how you're doing, what you're reading, what your plans are for this weekend. It's a long weekend. It's kind of funny because the fourth falls on a funny day. So it's like, it's for many, it's um, extending the time that people are off. So it's gonna be very nice. Today is my wedding anniversary. So I'm excited about that. Uh, some plans later on with my husband. So. Today's going to be good. And the weather is agreeable. Um, my birthday um, day was really nice weather and I'm getting, knock on wood, good weather for our anniversary too. So this is cool. Mm -hmm. And what else um, was I going to tell you guys? Um, let's get into what I've been reading. And I'll take treat, treat this as a Friday Reads kind of wrap up because I don't want to wait too long because I'm... You know, I'm already behind on things and stuff too. So let's do that. Let's do this. Let's do this. Okay. So the first one was How High We Go in the Dark by Sequoia um, Nagamatsu. And oh, I really enjoyed it. I read this with, um, I'm, in an, I'm in two different book clubs. And um, with this one, I had saw the description and I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to join in and we're going to, I'm going to go on it. And for some reason, I was drawn to this. This would, this book, I, I, I listened to the author talk and I, I cringe a little bit trying to put it into a category of, of, you know, science fiction or fantasy. There are elements of that in this story. Um, it could also be a book with regards to climate and climate change. So I'm just going to leave it at that. If you read it, you decide what genre it's in or whether that's important to you or not um, than the story. So you see, I got lots of little flags here. I read it and what I will say to people, and I don't know if I've said this already before in a previous video, um, read this in a short sitting amount of time and they are short stories. It's a novel told in short stories. So they are all connected in some ways um, to the overarching um, theme and story um, of the book. There's also a lot of links and different things that I, I ended up like I took notes like and I in a I typically will flag books, I will pull out quotes, sometimes I'll put a little bit of notes out. But for this one I wanted to be prepared for the discussion. Um and so I went back to each story and kind of scanned them to get, remember exactly what the st each story was and to look for links because I found it kind of fun, like a scavenger hunt, 
to find the links to some of the stories. That said, if you just solely listen to this book in audio, I think you're going to lose some of what the author was trying to do. And it might become, it could be still okay, for, a, 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 an interesting read, but it might also turn you off to like, okay, why did I hear that before? And when did I hear that? Where, how am I gonna find that? It also might be challenging a little bit for an e-reader because flipping back and forth, I have, I, I read this and I, I read books and I read in my Kindle. I'm, I'm not, you know, adverse to reading on a Kindle. But as much as the technology has improved, it still is a little challenging to, it's quicker to go through this and scan than it is to this, to go back, right? To go back and forth, that's, and it, it's more important that you said. Um, so I would say, if you're gonna read this, there's two things you could do. One, you could just read the book straight out, or you could read the book accompanied by audio. And that's what I did, which made it even more enjoyable because I thought it was, I loved listening to the characters. Um, and so um, I enjoyed this book for so many reasons because I think that there were, and it's not a happy story or so, set of stories. Um, it's, it, it's, it's, there's a lot of, um, you know, there could be trigger warnings in terms of death and how we respond to death and what we do once people have, um, died. Um, I know that there was a member in our group that had lost so many people over the course of the last, um, five to 10 years that it just was too much for her to take on this book. So that could be something to say also for somebody that wants to read it. But if you don't have any of those things and, that, and you are interested in something that's really, really creative and very, um, I thought, unique experience, I thought it was really, really good. Um, the story starts out, I'll tell you this much, in 2030, and it's a father who is going to Siberia where his daughter, who was a archeologist, she um, perished discovering this remains of a girl that was over, I wanna say she was over, 30,000 years old. That's what I wrote here, but I'm not really quite sure if I got that right. Um, and it's him going, he also is an archeologist, so he's kind of like going to, for many reasons, but I think he's also going for, for, for to help complete the work that she had started with this team, okay? Then there's several other stories in here that are just talking about these different themes of death and dying. And, and it makes you really think about how we are very attached to our rituals and routines for, for um, how we deal with death, how we deal with the dead. Um, and also just talking about it, you know, we, it's kind of taboo. So I think that this book really, if you get a chance, it's definitely, it's, it's trippy a little bit. <laughs> um, and, but it's really good. And, I appreciated it even more after I saw the author speak. I went and found a video for him. And actually the, the person that leads our book club did a really great thing before the meeting. I didn't actually see it, so I didn't have the benefit of it. But she gave us a bunch of links about some of the things that are true. The author did do a lot of research. He is Japanese American. Um, and he did some research in Japan about some of these practices. And um, so some of these practices um, are based on true practices that are occurring. Um, because we don't always consider all of the factors with regard to, you know, you know, we have cemeteries, we have all the space, right? But do we really have all the space? You know, space is getting smaller and smaller. If you're talking about a place like Japan where you're just surrounded by water and it's a small place and you have a lot of people, you have to be more creative on the way that you're going to create or sustain have sustainable rituals, right? Um, and um, we it, it also deals with an issue of, so if you also get a trigger from a pandemic, I'm not gonna call this a pandemic book per se. He wrote it before the pandemic, but there are elements of that in here that bolster the story forward. And those are things that we have had, we, we can recall, and unfortunately in our memory of how we had to deal with a mass amount of people dying or being coming ill at its, its simultaneously and how our systems were not really prepared to handle that. 
it's so um so i found this really interesting so I, i'm trying to be vague because you really need to be i can't tell you i want you to go into it blind if you choose to do it but i really liked it and after i heard him speak i bumped this up into my rankings very highly because i thought it was so good so that was really good so then I went on from that, and the next one that I read is, and these I gotta return to the library. This is the other thing. I've been holding these books hostage. I've re renewed all of them, and they can no longer be, not all of them, all the ones that are library books, but um, I've renewed all of them to the maximum amount. So I have to return them, you know, because somebody else wants to read these books. So this other one's called The Times Undoing. It's a novel by Cheryl A. Heed. This is the cover. It's a really cool cover because if you look at it, you know, it's her silhouette, but it's a tree and there's roots. And then there's also a person that you can see a person in here. And there's probably other things that I'm not seeing, but I can see that person in here. And I think it's really, I think it's actually this one person. So this, this is a fiction, a historical fiction where the author actually, um, it's about a journalist that's researching the past of her grandfather, uh, reaching, researching her grandfather story who had been murdered in the past and she's trying to figure out how to go about utilizing her skills and her knowledge and some connections to try to find out what happened to him because the family did not know what happened you know they just know he was murdered and that was it but they didn't get any other details this is based on the author actually doing a family research about her own, um, I think her own grandfather as well. And so there are elements of that into the story. I found it interesting because like I told you guys before, I've paused it lately, but um, I have been always working on some genealogy and trying to find out things. I like the mystery of it, but I also find the frustration as a, as a black person in this country, trying to track down records that do not exist or trying to be creative on how we gather information and where you get it. At one point in the story, the main character, um, when she was looking up some of the records, she was able to find out some information by some of the black um, newspapers were, that were printed back in the time because they were more um, likely to carry more detail about that as opposed to the regular mainstream um, white um, newspapers, new pa newspapers of the time. Oh my God, I can't even talk today. Um, and so this one, it oscillates between Birmingham in 1929 and Detroit 2019. And so you get um, a, a dual timeline where you're getting the story of her great grandfather and where what's going on with him. And then you're following her in present day trying to navigate um, the systems in place to try to find out what happened um and so i found it really good i thought this was written really well um i thought that it was very interesting there were things that even i learned and in, in terms of like you know um how she approached her research and things like that so that really um you know did it for me you know and made me made me happy to read it so yeah I this one was one that I did not hear anything of and I think I just saw this at the library and so I decided to read it and it was a really good one so I'm two for two two really great books so then the next one I read I owned I bought this one um I bought this one when the Barnes and Noble was closing and remember here and I was like oh you know I got some really good deals shameless deals Mm -hmm. I feel a little tickle in my throat. Um, and this is called Hurricane Summer by Asha Bromfield. And apparently Asha is a an actress, which I'm trying to place her. Every time I look at her face, I'm like, mm, do I know her? It says she's an actress, a singer, a singer and a writer of Afro-Jamaican descent. Um, it said she's known as a role as Melody Jones, drummer of Josie and the Pussycats on CW's Riverdale. Okay, that's probably why, because I'm like, I'm probably not really the market, you know, the demographic for the show. So if you do watch Riverdale, she, the author of the book that's here, is actually um, the writer, you know, the person that wrote this book is from that show. So there's that. And remember I showed you, it's so beautiful. It's got like Duns River Falls in here. Set in Jamaica, for all of you that don't know where that is. 
Um, but the book is set in Jamaica and it follows this girl whose parents are, um, her father and mother are Jamaican, but they live in, she lives in, he, she and her sister live with her mom and look how I'm laid back. I'm so tired still. Um, <laughs> but I want to make this video. So I'm hanging in there. Um, they live, I believe, oh my goodness, I think they're in Canada with their mom and their parents are split. The father is now in Jamaica and they are going to spend the summer with, um, hence the title, Hurricane Summer, um, in Jamaica with their father. And it was written really well. What I'm going to say, again, another trigger warning book for um, sexual assault um, and verbal abuse um so if those things are really bothersome there are things in here that would be might be a problem um when i read this i have to say i cringed of, of quite often in this story because this character was so young and naive in terms of how it's gonna be i swear to god i'm like i'm practically laying down while i'm talking to you guys i'm so I feel very comfortable. Um, so the, the, she's very naive and young. The things she's doing, okay, so I'm, I'm coming at it from, you know, a much older position. She's, I think, 17, and her sister's younger than that. But she's very naive. She gets herself into situations that, you know, I, I was sitting reading it, I'm like, oh my God, God, please don't, no, 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 no. Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? But she's also then at the same time, you have to think she's still a child and it, and some of the situations she gets in um, and she's put in are just so rotten and make you very angry, um, you know. Um, but what the story does is it gives you a good glimpse of what it's like to be like an expatriate, like you're coming to, coming to a place that people call your home and you know her father obviously he loves being there and you know he loves his country and she has put him on a pedestal despite the fact that he's no longer in their lives on a main you know mainly um and, and that their mother is the only one that has, has been raising them and you get the the perspective of the people that are left behind some people you know might have gone to the UK, some people might have gone to the United States, some people go to Canada, you know, and so the people that are left behind that some by choice and some not by choice, um, you get the resentment, you get the anger, frustration of, of being left behind, being seen as less than, um, it's all about perception. Sometimes people perceive things that really just aren't. So sometimes they may think that the people are coming and looking down on them when they aren't, and sometimes they are. And for the people that are there, it's hard to just be, always be happy and, and opening and welcoming because your everyday life may not be as easy as the people that are coming. Um, and so you see this strife between her and her family that is there with her father and um, the guilt he has also from leaving them. It's a really good story, but I'm just gonna tell you, I did, I had a lot of moments. There's a couple scenes in there that were very cringy and for me and um, were tough, but I think overall I get what she was going with the story and I found it really interesting and I felt that she captured a lot of the essence of Jamaica um, and, and also, you know, just the, the annual hurricane season, you know, having to deal with that on a regular basis, you know, from childhood to adulthood, how everybody has a role and how everybody realizes the severity of it and how everybody has had or knows somebody that has had loss from it and how there's no necessary necessarily recovery always you know we always think okay we have hurricane season when you're living outside of the islands you're like okay well then they you know they repair on the off season well that's not always possible so you know it's like getting beat down and down you know um and not being able to get a chance to 
recover or have the, the, the money to be able to do it properly. Um, and so you get a sense of that as well. And so I think in the, for that, I applaud her. I think it was really great to just be a reminder that, you know, although we look at the Caribbean as a paradise of which it is, but we also kind of sometimes overlook the other aspects that um, make up existing there and make it hard for the people that are there. So another good book, if you get a chance to read it, I definitely said it's good. It's just, there was definitely trigger, 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 trigger. And the last book that I read, I had one more, I did not finish it, but this is the last one that I read. I finished this, this morning and this is River Sing Me Home by Eleanor Shearer, a brand new book. And I wanted this cover because it's just fabulous. Look at that cover. Lots of flags, lots of flags. Um, I love this story. Um, it was very good. It follows, um, it's in 1834, it says, yeah. Um, and it follows this woman named Rachel who through slavery ended up losing all of her children um, and then the book follows her pursuit to find out every one of her children and find out what happened with them. And um, it was really good. This one reminded me a lot of, and I brought it out when I was thinking of talking to you, of this amazing book that I read in 2021, which was Island Queen by Vanessa Riley. This was a chunker with a, a fabulous cover, but this would be a great another book to read um, if you're reading, if you wanted a recommendation still, it's okay to read Caribbean books after Caribbean, Caribbean month. Um, this one was phenomenal. And this was a similar story of a woman following, she was in Haiti, I believe we were following in this one. And then she moved though to different islands too, I think. Um, but um, trying to recover from the loss of her children and, and slavery. So there were a lot of similarities in these two books. Um, um, and I think, you know, there could be a library of books that cover these kinds of stories. Cause again, just like, just like American slavery stories, there's not just one story that represents it. There's a lot of um, different perspectives. And I think reading them give you, each one gives you a little bit of something else more to think about. Um, but this one was really fantastic. And then I have her next one I was going to read. That's this year. It's called Sister Mother Warrior, which look at her covers are fabulous. Aren't they fabulous? They're beautiful. I haven't read this one yet. This is on the list though, um, by Vanessa Riley. So, and hers are historical fictions as well. This one, um, oh, the author, I don't think I have a picture in here of her, but this one was based on the author who, she lives in the UK, but on based loosely on her great great her step great 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 grandmother I think um and um and other stories and things she did her thesis on slavery in the Caribbean and so she um had a plethora of of information to pull on to create this story um Rachel is the mother and she has had all of these children and her journey to like try to find them was incredible. And I don't remember if I put, if I marked any good quotes. I think I've marked a lot of who was who, but if I do find them and I, when I'm putting my notes in my journal, I'll make sure I try to tell you guys some of the quotes, but it was written really beautifully. It was um, a definitely a touching story and you're on your edge of your street seat, especially towards the end to find out what's gonna finally happen in the end of the story. But I thought it was really a beautiful story that, <sighs> it shows you the fracturing of families. You know, um, I, I think sometimes when we talk, talk about enslaved people, we just think about people working in the fields or people working in the house, but we don't really talk about like, or think about what it means to have like your child ripped away from you. What does it mean? I remember the one that, it, the book I read, that was two years ago, how the word was passed. I love that one. He talks a little bit about that in his book too. Um, you know, about the fracturing of families and how devastating. And I think also, if I'm correct, 1619 Project talked about that too. Just about 
the economic uh, strife that that caused as well, you know, um, when you tear people apart, psychologically, financially, everything on, on all levels. But it just reminds you, you know, it, it, to, you know, to appreciate what you do have, but just that, that there's so much devastation around um, racism and slavery. Um, and it, it definitely um, has a long lasting effect for generations, right? There's no way that those things could occur and not cause that much problems. I'm sorry, my eyes itching so much. It's just, despite taking allergy medicine, I'm still itching. Um, so, um, I really loved it. I thought it was good. I'm not, I'm trying to be like, I'm not trying to tell a lot. I just want you to kind of go into it yourself, but I thought this was really good. She talked about in the end in her notes about where she came up with certain ideas and inspirations. Rebellions that she had researched that she included elements of that in this story. One thing she talked about that I thought was really interesting was that depending upon the different islands and the makeup of how the island is and the amount of space that was uh, pillaged in terms of creating plantations, some islands had opportunities for uh, the enslaved people and, and freeborn um, blacks after slavery was in, um, abolished to create a, a community of their own. Um, and I think, I think that was Trinidad was one of them that she said that had that ability because of the landscape and how it was and the spacing for people to do that. Um, it's just, it's, it's just, it's something, you know, slavery is still hard for me to read and think about and fathom, but it's still so, I'm still curious. I'm still curious. It's, I haven't had my fill, so I hope I don't really, you know, drive you guys crazy when I read some of these stories and talk about them because it's not always a topic people want to talk about, but I still find it uh, intriguing to learn more and to look about, look at the strength and the resilience of people and how they persevered in such, you know, awful times. So those were the books because I'll keep going on and on. I know there's something else I wanted to tell you guys and I'll remember as soon as I push the button to stop. This was one that I was going to read as well called Camp Zero by Michelle Min Sterling, but I have exceeded the time that I can keep it. And what I've decided to do, I've only gotten in to page 35. So um, it is good, but what I am going to do, I think I'm going to do is wait for the audio. I feel like this might be one that I'll benefit better on the audio and try to get it through, um, you know, my... Um, Hoopla or for Libby and see if I can get it that way and, and listen to it because I do want to finish this one. Um, I started it and it seems very intriguing and this is kind of a, a climate, um, I, I guess there's a, a genre now, like a client fiction one that, that kind of um, covers possible things that could happen or like that or, you know, and to remind us, you know, what things are causing and leading to that. But yeah, this one sounds very interesting and it's, and it's, I think, what was the other thing? Yeah, I think the other thing that intrigued me about it too was it, the characters were, I think they're Asian and I think that it, um, they're Korean and they are, um, it's not always a story that, you know, you don't always find science fiction or like that with Asian characters. And I was curious to see how they're going to weave that into the story and how they may tell um, I believe that they are immigrants, they're displaced Korean immigrants, and the woman is basically trying to secure employment so she can take care of her and her mother. But I think you're going to get their backstory, and I want to see how they're going to lay that inside of a kind of a science fiction-y story. So that was one of my reasons why I wanted to read that one. So I don't know how long I'm talking because I'm losing track of time. But I wanted to also share with you a couple other finds that I found um, of books me to stop say stop Belinda stop buying books because I got this one from a free library and I almost jumped because I was like what first of all it looks brand new 
and I knew from the from the the spine of it. I'm like, oh my god, I've heard of that book. I I want it. So I did. I am proud to say, happen to have a book in my car that I've been riding around with in my car for this very purpose. I went back to my car and put a book in um, to replace it. But this one is called We Are Not Like Them by Christine Pride and Joe Piazza. And it's um, it was a Good Morning America book club pick. And in the front it says, now these women, they are right. And it's W-R-I-T-E. And that's Terry McMillan that blurred it on the, blurbed it on the front. And this is, let me tell you the, let me tell you the, Published because I'm like this looks brand new okay so it's 2021 that it came out but like look at it look look right doesn't that look like and like I don't know did anybody read it maybe they had it and I don't know but I'm excited because I think I would read it let me just tell you a little bit about it really quickly it says um this is a timely, evocative read about what tests us as friends, as partners, and ultimately as humans that will have you rethinking your own perspective and experiences. Told from alternating perspectives, We Are Not Like Them is a riveting and compassionate novel about the long life, no, long life, lifelong, <laughs> lifelong bond between two women, one black and one white, whose friendship is indelibly altered by a tragic event. Jen and Riley have been best friends since kindergarten. As adults, they remain as close as sisters, though their lives have gone in different directions. Jen married young and after years of trying, is finally pregnant. Riley pursued her childhood dream of being a television journalist and is poised to become one of the first black female authors, I mean anchors, sorry, of the top news channel in their hometown of Philadelphia. But the deep connection they share is severely, sever, severely tested when Jen's husband, a city police officer, is involved in the shooting of an unarmed black teenager. Six months pregnant, Jen is in free fall as her future, her husband's freedom, and her friendship with Riley are thrown into uncertainty. In covering this career-making story, Riley wrestles with the implications of the tragic incident for her black community, her ambitions, and her relationship with her lifelong friend. We Are Not Like Them explores complex questions of race and how they per pervade and shape our most intimate spaces in a deeply divided world. But at its heart is a story of enduring friendship, a love that defines the odds, even as it faces it, uh, even as it faces its most difficult challenges. Doesn't that sound good? Um, it sounds like a good book club one for sure, right? That you have lots of things to talk about. So I'm excited. That one I got for free. And so yes, I do. I know where we're gonna put it. Is the question where am I putting these books? I've got a purge again. I have shelf space. This one, I had to get it. I paid $2.99 at Savers, which I got the receipt here. And it looks pretty good. There's a little ding on the back. But this is The Mountain Sings by um, Nujian Peng, Feng Kui Mai. I probably said it wrong. Um, this one, I just got the recent one. It's called, um, hold on. Is it in that one there? No, it's not in that pile. I just got their recent, oh, is it in here? Novel by this author. I do have it. And so I wanted to get this one because this is the first one. Oh, I read it. It was the one, oh gosh, you know, help me. Help my brain. Wait a minute, I'll tell you. Wait a minute. Do not fear. It was called, why did I? down here anyhow I got this one because I didn't have this this is a backlist from a, some same author and and I wanted to read it this one was oh dust child oh gosh I just read it remember remember dust child the one with the beautiful cover I don't see it over here to show you dust child was the one that followed you know um the soldier and the Amerasian children trying to um, reunite and come to the United States. This is the first book by that author. And this is the one that gave them like, you know, uh, gave, uh, they, there was a lot of accolades to her. Okay. So this one I think is also set in Vietnam. It says with the epic sweep of Min Lee, Min Jin Lee's Pichenko or Yagasi's homecoming, the mountain sings tells an enveloping multi-generational, you know, I love that tale of the Tran family set against the backdrop of the Vietnam war. Tran De Lan, who was born in 1920, was forced to flee her family farm 
with her six children during the Wan reform as the communist government rose in the north. Years later in Hanoi, Hanoi, sorry, <laughs> her young granddaughter Hong um, comes of age as her parents and uncles head off down the Ho Chi Minh Trail to fight in a climate conflict, sorry, that tears apart not just her beloved country, but also her family, blah, 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 blah. So it goes on and on. But yeah, so this is the uh, first book by that author. So I definitely snagged this one when I saw it. I was like, well, yeah, I've got to have it, $2.99. And it's in, aside from that little ding, it looks pretty good to me. And it's a floppy. So like you can kind of like just read it with one hand. You don't have to like hold it because it's rigid. So I love that. Good summer stuff. So those are the two I got. I'm still having these headaches. I'm working on that. Um, I've got a summer list. I know we started, what is it? We're a few days in now, um, about a weekend already, summer. Um, but I put together a list of books that I want to read for summer. And I'm considering summer until summer is officially over, not summer as in, in September, which I sometimes do because the kids are back in school. I'm going to put that TBR together for the months that span the time of summer on the calendar. And then what I will do is see how many of the books I can read. So I'm looking at the pile right now. I need to record a video to let you know about those books. They all sound really good. They are um, not, they made me feel summery or they felt like something I wanted to feel and read in the summer. So that's where I got the idea for these books. Now you know I'm a mood reader and I may totally stray from that list, but but I, I, I'm pretty sure that I'm solidly gonna read several of the ones on the list. So there that is. I hope you guys are well. I hope I didn't babble too long and I hope you stayed to the end of the video. You didn't click away. Um, leave down below what you're reading, what you're doing. Do you have plans this weekend? Are you gonna plan to go to my in-laws and hang out with them and watch the fireworks and eat and relax um, and just enjoy each other's company? Let me know how you guys are all doing and I will talk to you again soon. And I'm sorry for the big space and time.